previously. Can you lend us 20 grand? I heard you unloaded yesterday. <laughs> I need it myself, sorry, mate. I may as well just say it over the radio now. I just yeeted a banana up onto his roof. At the end of the day, mate, you're starting the war, and I'm going to make that chieftain look like an omelette. It's lobster season in the waters off Tasmania's rugged coast. I'm going to give the young bloke a little bit of a crack at setting some pots this trip. Yep. I'm right where he put the first one. I like it. Three hardcore lobstermen are battling for the biggest catch and the best price. Yeah, how'd you guys find them? 201. Did you really? You can never rely on Squizzy for telling you any numbers of what he's getting, ever. Another blank. It's uh, going to be our worst shot. This boat needs at least one ton minimum before we go home. We're there to make money. There's only one way to do that. That's work even harder. It's lobster time. We're on about 30 knots at the moment. Raining, foggy. After days of calm conditions, the weather has turned wet and wild on Tasmania's west coast. Treacherous wind gusts over 100 kilometres per hour are battering the chieftain and its crew. Woo! Hunting in these conditions is a whole lot harder. Better be lobs in this pot. Come on. The weather's no joke. Even on a boat like this, your risks for injury are substantially higher. Your risk for damages, your risk for one small mistake. You seriously are in danger, and you've really got to outweigh the risk and reward. Hey! Oh, Eager to be up here while it's blowing 40 knots and four metres or whatever, but sometimes you just have to do what you have to do to make money. Just one out of that pot. It's Monday and I'm unloading Friday, so we're going to punch into the weather and we're going to fish. In the lobster game, having a boatload of fish means nothing, unless you have a buyer paying the right price. So it cost us around 46000 just to leave the wharf. Due to the processes only offering us low, low value for our lobster, we've had to find other markets. Come on, lobos. Bryce is bypassing traditional buyer processes. He's negotiated an above market rate by selling direct to restaurants. Very touch and go, these pots. So having these small little buyers is really going to help us in the long run. It allows us to bring our sort of medium price back up a bit, one little bit at a time. A few phone calls to make today. Uh, I'm going to talk to one of my other buyers to see what's happening. His handshake deal with Jock from Muir's restaurant is locked in for 300 I'll kilograms of brindles at $45 per kilo, $5 higher than the current beach price. Two is better than one, one's better than none. These smaller restaurants, they've got a lot of things happening at once. So it's important that I check up with Jock to make sure nothing's changed. The deal with Jock is worth $13,500. Good, mate, yourself? Yeah, good. That's good, that's good. How's it going? Ah, uh, good. Fishing's not too bad. The brindles are easy to catch. What day will you be in? Mm, aim for the Friday, this Friday coming, like a like a mid late afternoon. Yeah, OK. If that works. Yep. But if anything changes, I will, I'll let you know straight away. OK, cool. No worries. Um, Just double checking. How many kilo yeah. were you after? Yeah, look, I reckon um, we can do, um, so, yeah, 250's probably better. Is that going to work? Um, yeah. One minute, we've got 300. Next minute, we've got 250. Thank you. Cheers, Bye. mate. Wait. At the end of the day, that 50 kilos would cover half of Lockie's wage. It could cover the grocery bills. It could cover the fuel. So not having it just means we're, we're going in the negative again.
Are you excited, mate? Yes. Yes? Yes? The Jagers have been fishing the waters off Tasmania for five generations. So Ryan's 16 now. He's been coming out with me pretty much the same as me with my old man since he's been knee high to a grasshopper, so... What one do you want me to pull first? Mate, there's just one there if you want to go Take straight in. to her. Yesterday, training commenced for the sixth generation. Ryan took the reins of the Anson's Bay for the very first time and set all 50 of its pots. Lobster fishing is all about experience, and I want to try and give him all them experiences. Day two's lesson is all about pulling them, a crucial step in Ryan's development as a future skipper. If they're full, he won't only be filling the Anson's Bay tanks, he'll be topping up his own, his dad's and Kai's bank accounts. You get a few fish here, so hopefully they come up with a few. I remember when the old man used to let me set pots. It's nearly like the night before Christmas. You're just waiting to see what you're going to get out of your pots. You can't sleep and you're crossing your fingers and you're hoping you're going to get something to try and avoid the disappointment of getting bugger all. Just hoping there's fish in this first pot. Well, there's fish, so... Oh, sorry. there's fish! That's a That's start. The start. He's not a bad fish, that one, I guess. Look at him. Oh, I'll take him from your first cray. He's a bloody beauty for up in here. I think he's been saving himself, you know. Good couple crays coming out of this pot so far, so I'm happy with the start. Three out of the first pot, that's all right. We'll, we'll get better than that. Confident. I'm confident now. Let's just hope the run continues. Well, she was in cray weed, weren't she? I was in a lot of weed by the looks of it. She'll be right. going to be like that, is it? A cray would be nice. Any sign of life. Pulled the first pot and he got, a, he got a nice big one. I think he got two or three out of that. And we've had a couple of blanks here now, so... He'd be starting to get a little bit worried. This ain't no idea, old boy. Brian would have been waking up this morning thinking, oh, I can't wait to pull me pots. And, like, he, he's a bit of a confidence boy. When he's confident, he's confident, so... I don't really... I'm hoping that don't get knocked out of him. You know, there's a problem if you can't even catch a shark. Mm, we need a few more of them. Just wait on a little bit. You just got to have faith, bro. Pulling the anchor? Yeah. You must be getting old. Well, those grey hairs are suiting your age now. <laughs> How'd you go yesterday for those shots? Um, a hundred. What'd you get? Double that. Double that? Nice. You might be in front now, mate. <laughs> Bet. The battle between skippers plays out in the mind as much as it does on the tally board. Squizzy is slowly gaining on Snotty's head start, and as he does, he's leaving Bryce in his wake. Where are you going to be today? Oh, I can't discuss that over the phones, mate. He's mucked with us a fair bit this trip, so we have to get him back for something. I'll be out in the ocean, that's for sure. My main thing is catch lobsters. That's what I'm here for, and that's what I'm doing. And if we come across Bryce, that's a bonus. 439 yesterday. To beat that again today, I'll be absolutely wrapped. Normally when I have a really good day, I expect the next day to be better. These are terrible. I'm here to improve every day. I'm here to catch lobsters and I want to catch as many as I can right now. But the lobsters have other plans. 
These are terrible. Yeah. My fishing has changed over the last three years, where we're sort of probably catching 70, 80 per cent um, brindles. Now we've gone a lot more reds. Just because of the price differences, you gotta, you just got to target them. Reds are fetching $45 per kilogram, $5 more than brindles. But chasing that five extra dollars in the worsening weather is a gamble. Chasing reds when the swell's building makes it very hard. They just stay in their holes and don't want to come out to play. Don't matter what we do. You put all the bait in the world in there and use caviar, it won't matter. They will not come out when they don't want to. One out of that pot. One's better than none. With bad weather, you've got swell picks up. They're not going to move. They're not eating. They're not going to come out of their little rock. If they do, they'll get flung around the ocean. If every pot was blank, I wouldn't be happy. But I'm making some money, so I don't mind. The weather system is intensifying, and it's wreaking havoc for the crew of the Chieftain. The lobsters are running slow, and the numbers are low. Just 59 from their first 30 pots. Every shot, we tend to set the minimum at about 100 lobsters. But at the moment, it's just not looking good. I don't think we're going to hit that 100 mark. And the poor numbers are just the beginning. So far, I've got a guaranteed order to one restaurant. At the moment, that's just not enough. I need more markets. Gonna give Marcus at the Lobster Shack a buzz. He um, buys a few lobsters off me throughout the year and um, see what we can drum up. A few hundred kilos would be handy, and any more than that's just really good. With the current brindle price at $40 per kilo, selling direct to restaurants at $45 or better is Bryce's only hope of turning a small profit for the trip. Hey, Bryce. Hey, Marcus. How you going? Just wondering, you after any lobos at the moment? Yeah, yeah, no, we'll, um, we'll make some when you do, Matthew. Due back sort of Friday. Okay, yeah. And what do you got on board? Predominantly uh, brindles, 600s, not many of them, the females, but a lot of 800s, um, 900s, and a few kilos um, for the brindles, so. Yeah, what sort of deal can you do on the... Um, I was sort of looking at maybe 50. Glenn got 50, so we deserve 52. Yeah, well, um, well, I expect we'll be getting up there to those fish. Um, I don't know, what do you reckon then? We'll just go 45 on the, the brindles? Yeah, yeah, do that. At $10 more than market rates, 50 per kilo would have been a huge win, but Bryce will have to settle for 45. All right. Sounds good. Talk Thanks. soon. Cheers. Bye. Just these two little restaurant deals, we're talking around $25,000. We need at least another 400 brindles. I really want to be unloading on Friday. If that's the case, we're really up against the clock. When the swell's up like this, my gut tells me to go deeper. Because you're not going to catch reds in the forecast, what's forecast for the next couple of days. Not big numbers anyway. Brindle lobsters live at depths of 25 fathoms or more. They're less affected by rough seas, which means they're more likely to remain on the run. However, they're worth less than big reds. Squizzy has no choice but to suck it up and see how the rest of the shot pans out. At the end of the day, it's business, so you're very competitive. Intel helps you catch more lobsters and get the best price 
Not bad, mate. Hope you got good news. I don't want any bad. Or if there's any bad news, just hang up now. The latest market update is not due until later this afternoon, well after Squizzy's next shot has been set. So he's calling a top secret contact, hoping for some inside information to help him decide which type of lobster to target next. I just don't know whether they know, I just don't know whether they have a day shot on brindles or not. That's all. He's saying there could be a shortage of brindles, but he's not certain if the price will go up. Roger. See ya. Bye. Being a rock lobster fisherman is a total gamble. If the price doesn't go up, we could lose money. Our luck's got to change. Our luck has to change. I don't, I don't know about this spot. They're not very lively. Things are not looking real super duper here at the moment. A cray would be nice. Sometimes first pot, it gives you false hope. You start off good, it's like then your mood starts to go. Jesus Christ. Not much in that one either, just one little, one little rat. Not gonna do the young blows confidence, but it's bloody good. Come on, just the next pot, just be loaded, just be loaded. Still just came up with the pops. You're joking. <laughs> he must like crayfish. Fur seals are common on Tassie's south coast, and although they're skillful hunters, some opportunists have been known to take advantage of hard-working fishermen. He's a little beast, Fuzz. <laughs> He's sticking his head up to see what's going on. We call him Boris Isil. The last few trips, every time we've been out, he follows us around. He's just a character. Boris eats mainly fish and squid, but his favourite feast by far is octopus. This Boris, like, he stuck his head in the pot trying to get the octopus out. Hey! I hope you don't come up and lords out of the water like a great white. He'll grab your hand, mate. He's a bit of entertainment. He's bad luck. The seal's bad luck. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> on the end of the beak. <laughs> Good job, mate. <laughs> yeah, he's took a bit of heat off Ryan, I think. Because <laughs> we're getting a bit of a laugh out of him, so... Yeah. I think he's helping Ryan, otherwise we'd probably be bagging him, I reckon. <laughs> Ryan is scoring less than a fish a pot on average. I'm upset, like upset, like I really wanted him to do well. You start getting empty pots and then you lose your confidence and he knows he's set them and it's like you just, you, you get a bit disheartened. If this has got nothing in it, I'm just quitting. My crayfishing days are over. Never again in my life. So if this has got nothing in it, I'm just quitting. Ryan's shot isn't panning out the way he'd hoped. The skipper in training has only a handful of reds from the first 20 pots. The low numbers are messing with his confidence. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to be a cray fisherman. Not going to do this again. I reckon they can stay in there. I'll stay out here. This is where I belong. His morale was down, like he's not up and about like he normally is. I'm not doing this again. Mate, I really wanted to lift his spirits a bit and get him up and about, like... You want to have a go at pulling him? Yeah, I'll do the last three. 
what am I doing? Ryan's got through to go of his plots he set, so giving him a go of driving, see how he goes. I'll keep an eye on him. He hasn't pulled any pots for. There's a few different things, like you gotta make sure you're not running over the rope, you gotta control the hauler properly. So we won't stand too close to the hauler for the first couple of Yeah, I was thinking the happens. same. <laughs> Just in case. Pulling pots, it'd be the most dangerous part of fishing. Just go further out and come back in. Roger. And you've got to bring things together, like you've got to steer the boat, you've got to throttle off, neutral, watch what you're doing, making sure you're not turning at the rock wrong time so your rope's not going to go up into the prop. You don't want to be too close. Pull, pull your throttle off into neutral and she'll blow it up. There's more to it than it looks. Hard left, hard left. Rope's going that way, so turn the wheel. <laughs> Get a, get a go. You're in control of the pot hauler. The pot hauler's the dangerous thing on the boat. If you don't turn that off at the right time, the pot could end up anywhere. Yeah, just stand there, old boy. That has brought you luck. <laughs> Maybe I need to pull them all. Maybe you need to pull them all, yeah. Ryan's morning shot might not be delivering the Reds he'd hoped for. Now, he must be getting faith in you. He's standing close to the rail now. But it's been invaluable for Snotty, able to pass on generations of Jager fishing know-how to his son. When you're young and you're learning, you have some good shots. I tell you what, though, if they're empty like that, they're a bit heavier to pull over the rail, mate. So can you just bring them up a little yeah. bit closer yeah. for me? <laughs> good job. Well done. Wouldn't matter whether it was me setting them, Ryan setting them, or who's setting them. When the fish are not going, they're not going. But that's fishing. That's just the way it goes. I'm trying to figure out if that was my fault or if it's Nah, that wasn't your fault. That wasn't your fault. That was just the way they was today, mate. Having Ryan on board's bloody definitely made it this trip. Yeah, he's just got ways about him that sort of lifts my spirits and gets me up and about. Ryan passed Snotty Skipper School with honours. The future looks bright for the Jagers and their fishing dynasty. I'm pretty sure he'll be bloody champion skipper one day. Ryan's rookie shot was less than he wanted, but he still bagged the Anson's Bay 58 more reds. Bryce's 114 inches him closer to filling his 550 kilo restaurant orders. At the end of the day, I'm not happy with the night shot. I was hoping for a miracle. We didn't get it. We ended up with 105 red ones this morning. It's Squizzy's worst shot for the trip. Armed with insider intel, Squizzy has a hard decision to make. Stick to hunting for the more lucrative reds, or take a punt and go wide to catch brindles. This uh, boat's too dear to run, only catching 100 fish a day red or less. Some of the good guys can probably catch a lot more, but I ain't as good as them. I'm going to target the brindles. I'm going after brindles. I could be chasing fish that are worth nothing. That's the scary bit. Time to make a bit of a move. Might just uh, travel down the track a little bit, a bit closer to home. I know Bryce is out wide chasing the brindles. We'll see if we can run into him as we go past. Bryce put the banana on our boat. It has to be payback. Bryce has been a little bit uh, quiet and hiding, and he's just running like a chicken. At the end of the day, I'd like to turn that chieftain into an omelette, but we've got to find it first, and we've got to catch it.
Why is that squeezy? Yep. Squeezy looks a bit lost. He shouldn't be this wide. He should be going against the shoreline. He shouldn't be out here. We came down to an egg walk. We've got a few punnets on board. I don't mind pulling them all out. I don't actually know if he knows we're here. Imagine if we got to sneak up behind them because he's expecting us to be inshore, wasn't looking out here. Oh, no, I'd rather not go near him so we don't get egg. It's inevitable, mate. It's happening. No matter what happens. So I wouldn't leave you wet yet. Now, if he doesn't know we're here, I've, um... I've prepared myself. And there's a possibility we might sneak up behind him. I've been on the run, but I'm looking at a limping deer here and I'm hungry, so it'd be rude not to take the kill, I reckon. If you're not first, you're last. So we'll egg him first. An egg war with the bold contender seems inevitable. Bryce currently has a small advantage, the element of surprise. Or so he thinks. Ah. There's the chieftain. Just spotted Bryce on the horizon. He's out wide. Looks like he's chasing the Brindles. So I'll uh, give him a ring. Yo. You're chucking him in or pulling him? No, nah, we're anchored. Yeah, right. Oh, you're on the Morris. Yeah. Does he think I'm an idiot? We do have radars, Bryce. I can see you. Why is that? Where are you? It's going light along inside you. Oh, are you? Yeah. Yeah, you're not on the Morris. <laughs> yeah, I was just waiting for you to steam past and I was going to come up besides and egg you, but no, I won't bother now. <laughs> Came down to an egg war. I may as well just tuck Lockie up in bed because I don't think he's got much of a throwing arm on him. So for now, we're going to stay away from Squizzy and do our own thing, catch the some more lobsters. I guess we'll uh, see each other in a day or two. Uh, maybe. It's always time for payback, but out here in the ocean, trying to do eggs is impossible. Eventually, we'll meet up. Doesn't matter if it's on the wharf or at sea, we will meet up. Oh, that? Yeah, Roger. Oh, is that you, Dad? Like, I didn't recognise your voice start off with. You must be very close. Where are you going? I don't want to get in your way. Now, now you're talking with good sense now. <laughs> <laughs> you just got in the way of... Oh, yeah. Oh, that... Are you up there now, did you say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, old boy, catch up here. With multiple generations of Jagers hunting for Tassie's biggest reds, sooner or later, and for better or worse, they're bound to come across one another. Yeah, they were just dead, really, in there this morning, till three crazy in the pot. Snotty's father, Warren, has been fishing in Tasmanian waters for nearly 60 of his 74 years. Did you put any in that outside bay here? No, she's totally stopped, haven't they? Oh, she's that time of the year, isn't it? They're dying off. Is your Brian any cops, have you? We might have a little story to tell you there. Well, he said in Denman's, uh, we got 50... Eight. Man, what's up with that? Let's do stuff up. He was open for more than that. Oh, did he? His uncle got there before him, I think. <laughs> Crack of me brother, he'd been in working Deadman's there before we got there, so that sort of blends in with Ryan's shot, like, not doing so well. I got stooged up hard. Like, there's three Jagers out there, so, yeah. Like, for the areas we work, we run into each other a lot. For Snotty, the last two days of mentoring son Ryan have been a time to reflect. Well, it's sort of a bit of a funny feeling, like, because I know, like, how the old man used to teach me and what he used to do. And now I'm doing the same with Ryan. I feel like I'm the old man teaching me now. Like, it's just, yeah, it's, it's weird, but, yeah, it's, like, just must be in your DNA, I suppose. 
Rodri, Rodri. There you go. Yeah. I'd love for one day for Ryan to have a boat and pull up and talk to me. I'm the fifth generation fisherman, so hopefully Ryan can be the sixth. But Ryan's going to know all my spots and he's going to want to try and get into them and then I'm going to be like, oh, you little bugger. <laughs>
No bad, love you, no bad. Got eight out of that. Some nice fish in here, mate. There's like six in there, isn't there? Probably about 30 a bin, because they're a bit bigger fish, I reckon. I reckon they're about 90 here. Five, six, seven, twenty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six. One hundred and one. One hundred and one. We're halfway through the gear. We've pulled twenty-six. There's twenty-six more to go, and we're at one hundred and one. That's good so far. If we can pull a hundred out of the last half, I'm going to be happy. Squizzy is taking a massive gamble. His secret contact tells him the brindle price is on the rise. So he's gone all in, shooting his pots in deep water. Mate, can you just give us a price check for today, please? The current brindle price is $40 per kilo, but a highly volatile lobster market means the price can move on a whim. I go to bed thinking about the price, I wake up, thinking about what the beach price is going to be. I'm sick of thinking about the beach price. I just want it to go up. So what's Brindle's 800 to 2 kilos? What's that price? No worries. Roger Dodge. No worries. This is what I hate about fishing, is this. I need to get 200 for this shot. I need to get half of the lobster shack's order because I've only got two days to do it. Where's all the lobos, Loggy? Bop, bop, bop. Getting a bit nervous now. Uh, we've just moved across to this new spot. And we got one out of that pot and one out of the last pot. After bagging 101 from their first half, the fish have gone cold. At stake is more than just filling his potentially lucrative restaurant orders. It's going to be tight. That bin needs filling with five pots. Reaching 200 plus lobsters for the shot would be the first time Bryce and Lockie have hit that milestone this trip. And that could provide a much needed morale boost after many days at sea. Come on. Bugger. Just two out of that one. Might as well be a blank. I'm confident we've got the 200, Bross. Last shot, Loggy. Woo! Now, fishing's a lot like the saying, you can't count your chickens until all the eggs hatch. We've got 52 pots on board, and we can't say that we've caught 50 or 100 or 200 until we've got every pot on board. What have we got in the last pot for the afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> no more fish. One, two, three, four, five, 96. 97, 98, 99, <laughs> 100, 2, 0, 1. Best shot of the trip. Squizzy's biggest shot so far this trip is 239. The Chieftain's 201 isn't far behind. Well, I just feel like the real competition's between two people, Squizzy and myself. If Bryce keeps this up, he might just be able to shake off his greenhorn status and climb up that tally board. I'm happy as 200. With shots around the 201, if we can get this consistently, we'll be up there. We'll be up there with Squizzy now. 
Bryce's day shot nets the Chieftain a $7,200 payday. His plan to lock in smaller restaurant buyers for above market rates could be a masterstroke, especially now the latest beach prices are in. I'm stressing out the max. At the end of the day, this is all tactics. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you don't. Just got quoted $37 for Brindles. That's just not acceptable. That offer as of today, I couldn't take that. The price was very low when we left, and we took the gamble, hopefully, to go up while I was away. And um, it's just shit. We're losing money catching these fish. Pop with 11. I just need someone in the community to buy 11, and I'll celebrate. A $3 drop in the Brindle price represents a loss of tens of thousands of dollars. I feel like I'm in survival mode at the moment, financially. When your uh, business is uh, right on uh, the profit margin, it makes a big difference. How long can we take this crap for? We just, it's got to turn. It has to turn. It'll turn soon. Fuel's gone up in the last 12 months. Food, everything. Bait, our bait's gone up nearly 150%. Everything's gone up. We all know that. Cost of living has gone through the roof. Cost of catching a lobster has gone through the roof. But the price of a lobster hasn't gone up. Not for us, anyway. I need a backup plan. But I ain't doing a Glen. I ain't hanging out here for 19 days. No way. We don't have enough grog for that. Are you up there now, did you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Geez, old boy, catch up here. With multiple generations of Jagers hunting for Tassie's biggest reds, sooner or later, and for better or worse, they're bound to come across one another. Yeah, they were just dead, really, in there this morning, till free crazy in the pot. Snotty's father, Warren, has been fishing in Tasmanian waters for nearly 60 of his 74 years. Did you put any in that outside bay here? No, she's nothing. Totally stopped, haven't they? Oh, she's that time of the year, isn't it? They're dying off. Is it Ryan any pops, have you? We might have a little story to tell you there. Well, he said in Demons, uh, we got 58. Yeah, what's up with that? Stooged up hard. He was open for more than that. Oh, did he? His uncle got there before him, I think. <laughs> Cracking me brother, he'd been in working Deadman's there before we got there, so that sort of blends in with Ryan's shot, like, not doing so well. I got stooged up hard. Like, there's three Jagers out there, so, yeah. Like, for the areas we work, we run into each other a lot. For Snotty, the last two days of mentoring son Ryan have been a time to reflect. Well, it's sort of a bit of a funny feeling, like, because I know, like, how the old man used to teach me and what he used to do. And now I'm doing the same with Ryan. I feel like I'm the old man teaching me now. Like, it's just, yeah, it's, it's weird, but, yeah, it's, like, just must be in your DNA, I suppose. Right, Roger, Roger. Hey, good. Yeah. I'd love for one day for Ryan to have a boat and pull up and talk to me. I'm the fifth generation fisherman, so hopefully Ryan can be the sixth. But Ryan is going to know all my spots and he's going to want to try and get into them and then I'm going to be like, oh, you little bugger. <laughs>
200 today will give us what we need within the time frame we have to have one more shot on Brindles to get the order for Lobster Shack. If we don't get a couple of animals this afternoon, that just means more work for Lockie and I. 300 Lobos! 300, 400, 500, 700. Grab the wood. That's how Squeezy does it, isn't it? Two hands. Two hands is better than one. We've got the weather moving in. We've still got more lobster to put on the boat. I've told these guys we'll deliver their lobster. Time's a ticking. Four or five days ago for 230. And they're all, most of the fish are under a kilo, and that's what we want. This shot on the Brindles is a gamble. We don't know what the price is doing, so I just don't know if they're worth anything. The most of my business can catch in Tasmania is 20 tonne, so you've got to try and work around that market. You, you want your best return for that quota, because you don't, you don't want to waste it. Squizzy won't make much. Unless that price comes up to Brindles today, you're just chomping quota up for nothing. That's why you got to try and save your quota for when you get a decent dollar for them. It's a gamble now, just catching it. Because in two months' time, the situation in the world could change and we could be back to 100 bucks a kilo. And I've just burnt a tonne and a half at 45, 50, 55. There's $75,000 extra just straight off the bat. And it can be the other way too. You've got to make some money now because in two months it could be 35. That's just too much uncertainty, but we've just got to do the best we can. I know Bryce is catching brindles as well at the moment. That does scare me market-wise a little bit because we don't want too many going in because next minute that price drops flat out to nothing. That's thousands of dollars and that could be the difference between making money and losing money. You're in a hole, mate. Look up and lock keep his eyes out and make sure that no rope comes flicking at his face or around his legs or anything like that. It's a bit of a dangerous time. Got him! The pot's come unstuck. It's a good sign. Now it's a matter of what's in it. At least we know he was on a rock. And this pot has... It'd be funny if it landed upside down and there's nothing in it. Come on. Give us a pot full. I'd say the craze are holding it down, Ross. That's all right. The pot's looking good, but you can't count your chickens before they hatch. Got eight out of that. That's one full pot. We just need 51 more. Come on, 15 for the lobos. Just pulling number 17 now. Nearly just about to start the third bin of fish. Not bad, Lockie, not bad. Got eight out of that. Some nice fish in here, mate. There's like six in there, isn't there? Be about 30 a bin, because they're a bit bigger fish, I reckon. I reckon they be about 90 here. Five, six, seven, 
101. 101. We're halfway through the gear. We've pulled 26. There's 26 more to go, and we're at 101. That's good so far. If we can pull 100 out of the last half, I'm going to be happy. Squizzy is taking a massive gamble. His secret contact tells him the brindle price is on the rise. So he's gone all in, shooting his pots in deep water. Mate, can you just give us a price check for today, please? The current brindle price is $40 per kilo, but a highly volatile lobster market means the price can move on a whim. I go to bed thinking about the price. I wake up thinking about what the beach price is going to be. I'm sick of thinking about the beach price. I just want it to go up. So what's Brindle's 800 to 2 kilos? What's that price? No worries. Roger Dodge. No worries. This is what I hate about fishing, is this. I need to get 200 for this shot. I need to get half of the Lobster Shack's order because I've only got two days to do it. Where's all the Lobos, Loggy? Bah, bah, bah. 